That unpleasant conversation started quite by accident. At first, Dylan made snide comments about the way Nancy looked, but then he got angry because of her answer, while the woman sincerely couldn't understand why they were even fighting. Of course, she was well aware that it was her boyfriend's bad temper that was to blame for everything. Dylan often got mad over unimportant things and always considered himself the best man in the small town of Northern Ohio. He actually lived in New York and only came out during summer when the endless fields of corn covered everything in greenish yellow. The young people had arguments before, but that day Dylan had crossed all boundaries. You are really a fool, Nancy. Did you actually think that I could marry you? Do you even realize how many women want to marry me? They would literally line up for me. Nancy's eyes filled with tears and her lips started trembling treacherously. She definitely didn't expect Dylan to be so mean. Without saying another word, she sobbed quietly and hurried off home. The young man looked after her and shrugged his shoulders indifferently. Realizing that the evening was hopelessly ruined, Dylan plucked a blade of grass and biting the stalk with his teeth, felt its tart, salty taste. Then the young man proudly raised his head and making clouds of dust with his sneakers, headed towards his grandmother's house. Dylan knew that in just a couple of days, his girlfriend would calm down and forgive him. The man liked visiting his grandmother's farm, who always impatiently waited for her grandson's arrival. However, the older Dylan got, the more difficult it became for his relatives to handle his unbearable character. So when Dylan met a sweet young woman named Nancy, his grandmother breathed a sigh of relief. Rosemary Parker knew that Dylan would be in good hands from then on and that nothing bad would happen to him. The only thing that upset the old woman was the way her grandson treated his girlfriend. Mrs. Parker found herself thinking more than once that Dylan was too hard on Nancy, who grew up with romantic ideals she learned from novels. The woman was very hurt by her boyfriend's insults, both intentional and accidental. Of course, deep down, Nancy knew that she was deeply in love with Dylan, but she didn't dare to say it out loud. The young woman was most afraid of looking ridiculous in the eyes of her boyfriend, who lived in New York and treated provincial towns and villages with outright disdain. Nancy did forgive Dylan for his outbursts most of the time, but that day was simply too much for her to take. Having returned home, she closed herself in her room and cried until late at night. Meanwhile, Dylan was acting as if nothing had happened. He walked around the grandmother's farm and went to sit on the terrace. He was planning on passing the time with a bottle of something refreshing and going to bed. However, the young man didn't know that his grandmother already knew about his fight with Nancy. Apparently, when Dylan got angry, he shouted so loudly that half of the street heard every detail of their conversation. Therefore, Mrs. Parker decided not to let this situation slide and had a talk with her grandson. You shouldn't treat Nancy like that. You know that, don't you? She grew up in a poor family. She didn't have a father, so her mother raised her on her own. The old woman started straight from the doorway. Dylan looked at his grandmother with obvious irritation and muttered, Well, apparently you know everything already. Sometimes it seems that everyone in this town gossips. Mrs. Parker wanted to say something else, but her grandson pursed his lips in resentment and went inside the house. Dylan was used to doing what he pleased and rarely listened to anyone's advice. Therefore, he didn't feel the least bit remorseful as he went to bed and didn't even think of the consequences that fight could have. The next day, Dylan waited for a call from Nancy. The man was 100% sure that she would certainly call him first. However, time passed, but Nancy never reached out. Ultimately, Dylan decided to take the first step towards reconciliation but it wasn't as easy as he imagined. Instead of talking to his girlfriend, he got into a rather unpleasant conversation with Nancy's mother, who told Dylan that Nancy didn't want to see him. Now it was Dylan's turn to be surprised. The young man certainly didn't expect this turn of events. He was so used to feeling superior to everyone else that he stopped paying any attention to what he said or how he behaved. Frustrated by the conversation with Nancy's mother, 
The young man slowly wandered down the street and thought about what to do next. Does she really expect me to pine over her? There are dozens of women like her in any corner in New York, Dylan whispered, clenching his fists. The man wasn't going to apologize to Nancy, but he was planning on spending an unforgettable summer on his grandmother's farm. But when Rosemary Parker realized what kind of life awaited her, she immediately called Dylan's parents. The young woman didn't want to endure the antics of her grandson, who seemed to be on the verge of going completely wild. After Rosemary's long conversation with Dylan's father, the young man went back to New York. The vacation is over. It's time to look for a job and start using your head, Bill Parker said as he opened the door for his son. Dylan sighed sadly, but he didn't argue with his father. Instead, he settled comfortably in the passenger seat and having turned on the music of his smartphone, tried to distract himself from his sad thoughts. Dylan didn't want to leave an impression that he was a loser who got ousted by some small-town woman, but he didn't have a choice in the matter. Bill Parker was known as a tough man. He was an assistant director of a trading company and was good at nipping problems in the bud. Therefore, having returned to New York, the first thing Bill tried to do was take his son under his wing. However, to his great chagrin, Dylan had his own take on the matter. Instead of appreciating his father's support and starting to climb up the career ladder, the man took an easier path. Dylan didn't want to spend his days in a stuffy office, so he got a job as a courier for a delivery service instead. At first, the man really liked his job since it created the illusion that he was working and not just wandering the streets doing nothing. This went on until Dylan lost an important package, the cost of which was immediately deducted from his salary. The man, of course, couldn't handle being treated this way and thus quit his job that same day. Dylan's next job was at a car repair shop run by an acquaintance of his. There, the man worked for about a month and was fired for missing work and being late. Since Dylan's parents always put pressure on their son, he couldn't think of anything better to do than lie to them that he was doing great at work. In fact, the man moved from one friend to another, trying to deceive fate and his father. That went on for about three months, after which Bill Parker figured out what was going on. Are you trying to humiliate me? Do you like being homeless? I deliberately sent you to spend the summer with your grandmother in Ohio, but you managed to ruin that too. And now you're back to your tricks, the man exclaimed, gesticulating wildly. Dylan lowered his head and silently listened to his father. Deep down, he understood that his father was right, but he couldn't change the situation at that point. The man was used to thinking of himself as the center of the universe, expecting everyone and everything to revolve around him. But when the time came to solve his problems on his own, Dylan realized that adult life was often cruel even to those who least deserved it. Five years flew by. It would seem that it was enough time to figure out his life, but Dylan didn't use his chance and continued with his frivolous way of life. Going from one part-time job to another, the man never managed to find a permanent position. Basically, Dylan was fine with the way things were up until the point when his father fell ill, since he was Dylan's main source of income. Left without a cent in his pocket, the man started looking for a job yet again. After a short search, Lux, he stumbled upon a trading company recruiting employees at work at one of its branches. Dylan put on his best suit for the interview and went to the company's offices located a few blocks down away from his home. The man greeted the guard at the entrance and rushed to the office located at the end of the hallway. He pushed open the door, stepped inside, and froze in surprise. There was a pretty woman sitting at the table. She had thick brown hair and aristocratic features. A five-year-old girl was sitting at a kid's table in the corner of the office. She was the spitting image of her mother. Nancy, is that really you? What are you doing here? Was all Dylan could say. The woman raised her eyes and looked at the guest with a confident and authoritative look. Yes, Dylan, it's me. What brings you to my office? Nancy asked in a confident tone. 
The man felt so uncomfortable and embarrassed that all he could do was mutter something unintelligible about looking for a job. Nancy rose from her chair and took a few steps around the office. Then she turned to Dylan and said, I think we might have a position for you. There's an opening for a loader at the warehouse. Dylan turned pale and asked timidly, A loader? Is there anything else I could do? Nancy shook her head in response and looked pointedly at the door. Dylan understood everything without words. The main surprise, however, came a little later when Nancy told him that the five-year-old Sally was actually his daughter. As you understand, you have no parental rights, and I don't need you to pay child support. You broke up with me six years ago, didn't you? So you only have yourself to blame for everything. Nancy added, all this time, Nancy remained very calm and composed. Only now did Dylan realize what a mistake he made six years ago. He looked hopefully into Nancy's eyes, but all he saw there was rejection. Having agreed to take the loader position, the man lowered his head and went to the exit. Meanwhile, Nancy looked at her ex-boyfriend with indifference and called her husband to tell him that she wanted to have a celebratory family dinner at a restaurant. And she did have something to celebrate. Having taught her ex-boyfriend a lesson, Nancy could finally let go of her past, which meant that there would be no more obstacles on her way to happiness.